Yes, there are enemies of solar power. The enemies of solar power start with utilities, of course. Utilities don't like solar power because they want to put, put up bonds to build big plants in the desert and get paid for selling the electricity. So when you put electric solar on your roof, you don't pay the utility. You instead buy the hardware and you own it yourself. But there's a lot of forces marshalling against change. You know, one of them would have been probably people would have objected to windows when you first put windows in your mud hut. And some people could say, well, you shouldn't put antennas on your roof. You know, in fact, they did. You shouldn't have vents. You know, it's ugly to see a vent on top of a roof. You look at all the roof penetrations, you realize that houses are whatever we make of them. So in the future, every house will have solar systems on it. You'll just expect to see a beautiful solar system on the roof. But until then, a lot of people are opposed to it just from aesthetic reasons. The unions who want good jobs as linesmen and electricians, the fire department, you know, probably their pensions too depend upon uh, the DWP, for instance, having a lot of income, and the city of Los Angeles having a lot of income. And, and the fire department has made a lot of, of problems uh, for uh, solar systems. Their requirements contradict those of, of the, of the uh, utility company. The utilities require the system be as efficient as possible. The fire department demands that it only be a tiny, per cover a tiny portion of the roof and not be in the best part of the roof for attracting solar systems. The AC propulsion hot rod. And, and this is our solar system, which has been faithfully cranking out electricity for a long time now. It's, um, it's a battery backup system. There's the four batteries, 52 volts, 53 volts is what they're running at now. And this is an MX60 charge controller, which converts the 120 volts on the roof down to 48 volts, and it also does peak power tracking. So you don't see any warning signs here, you know, danger, solar system, or anything like that. And what I do have is a little bit of educational literature on the thing for when we used to do solar tours. So there's the RAVs, the RAV 4 EVs. <laughs> and here's our poor little solar system, you know, which is something I put in. And I mean, it isn't that pretty. It's got two different kinds of panels. But, you know, solar makes a lot of sense, so... <laughs> So it's catching. Next door neighbor has put in a solar system. And this one is beautiful. Much more beautiful than mine. So there's one over there too. There's another solar system. And then there's one down the street. And it's mounted on the front of a house down there. So, you know, these, even though there isn't a lot of uh, solar systems, and most houses don't have them, you know, it's starting to catch on. People are realizing solar makes a lot of sense. Why give your money to the utility when it's cheaper to use solar panels on your own roof? And look at all these unused roofs. So what's all this? Well, the enemies of solar power, which are the utilities, the building inspectors, the city, the unions, and others, you know, don't really want solar power to take over. So now they insist on all these warning signs. Warning, warning, caution, photoelectric services fed. And there's a whole bunch of other ones. So to make this, I went and bought this huge machine, <laughs> which uh, is an engraving machine, which can engrave anything. Just one more thing. Warning, danger, solar. This is our solar panels. You know, it's our main panel. You don't see any warning signs on this. This is our battery backup panel. And on this, you know, the panel, the circuits that are backed up are feed directly into the inverter. This goes to the VEV, which is no longer, they no longer have this, T-O-U-E-V. So this should be actually come out. It's not used now. But you don't see any warning danger signs on all this. So what happened was the, the fire department, under the guise that, well, if they have to get on a roof, they have to chop a hole in the roof of a burning building and, and to vent it so the fire goes up instead of uh, to the side. And that's legitimate. There are cases where they do that. Uh, but in, in, under the guise of doing that, they restricted the amount of space that can be put used for a solar system on the roof. So basically you can use about maybe a quarter of your, the surface of your roof for a solar system. You can't build it all the way to the top, what they call the crown or the, the uh, ridge line. And you have to allow pathways so that people can go up there to chop a hole in the roof. Now, it isn't, and also there's all kinds of signage, little red signs that have to appear every 10 feet on the, on the conduit 
and special warning signs at the DC disconnect and the AC disconnect and all that stuff to alert the fire personnel that there might be a solar system. And some of those concerns are legitimate. I mean, obviously, we don't want any fire personnel to be injured. But if it's a question of safety, then all the existing solar systems you know, should be retrofitted and uh, the regulations should be uniform because many cities just ignore it. For instance, you know, uh, this city, for instance, allows uh, the panels to go to the ridge line, which is the best place for them to be you know, in terms of efficiency. So it, it, isn't, it isn't a question of safety. It's a question of, uh, of the, what they really want to do. Uh, the other issue about safety is if it, if it were a question of safety, they could require uh, self-venting skylights. Skylights that would pop open in case there was a fire so you wouldn't have to send fire personnel on the roof with an ax to chop a hole in a burning building, which is insane when you stop to think about it. Why would you want anybody on the roof of a burning building, least of all, to chop, to chop holes in the, in the roof when we could just make a self-venting skylight, which would solve the problem? Uh, or the other issue is that in many cases, for instance, one house in Pomona, another in Long Beach that I can name, when there was an issue of danger, the fire department just stood by and watched the house burn. They didn't actually vent it. They didn't go in it. They didn't, they didn't even try to put it out. So you know, if it were a question of, of safety, uh, uh, they would just not go into the house. And you put a sign outside, you know, uh, this is the solar home. Why well, don't put a big sign out on the, on the require a sign on the law. This is a solar home. Fire personnel, beware. <laughs> but but it isn't, it isn't that, that isn't the issue. What it really is, is that fire, the fire personnel have been enlisted by the enemies of solar to try to stop it. And it's one of those brilliant things that they do. You know, they repackage opposition of solar power, which you know, everybody has to pretend to be for solar power. They repackage opposition to, to uh, solar power as uh, well, we have the fire department on our side, and when the fire department's on our side, one of these people told me, you know, you're going to lose. You're not going to be able to put in solar because we've got the fire department. The fire department is going to stop you.